Hey, what's up guys? Welcome back to my channel. My name is David Hamlin, AKA The Laptop Legend, and today, day trading, I made $8,900. Pretty good day overall, even though I butchered so many of the amazing opportunities that there were, and uh, I just gotta walk through some of these so you guys can see, you know, how you can take advantage of these. And I also wanna self-reflect about the mistakes that I made and how I can be better about this in the future, you know, to, to not make the same mistakes again and, and be able to capitalize better on the volatility that is there. Because today was actually such a crazy day and, uh, you know, I definitely left a lot of money on the table, but I'm still very grateful to have done as well as I did. I also have a, uh, a recording of, I would say not all of the trades, but, you know, a good portion of what helped me make that money and uh, I think it should be pretty entertaining for you guys to, uh, to see that footage. So I know, I know you guys like that live trade, trading footage. So I, uh, I got that here. I probably won't walk through the whole thing because it's pretty long, but you know, just some key parts just to show you kind of what was going on and uh, you know, what was going through my head as I was taking these trades. So hopefully you'll find this helpful. If you do, remember to smash the like button, drop a comment down below, and subscribe if you have not already. So let's get into it. All right, guys, so I'm here at my computer, and you might wonder why I have this, this uh, Avis budget group chart pulled up, and you can probably see right here on the right side. For whatever reason, today was the car-themed day. Anything even slightly related to a car ran today, and it ran hard for whatever reason. I don't know why. It's weird how sector momentum happens, but uh, that just happened to be the thing today. So car was the leader, and this thing, if you go to the intraday chart, oh my goodness, man, it was insane. This thing just went full on supernova, absolutely ripped. I didn't trade this at all, not even a little bit. Uh, I wasn't even attempting it. I didn't even consider it just because I was, you know, focusing on the plays that I am confident on and that I, you know, I know where I have an edge. But this one was insane, man. And uh, I know some traders who blew up on this thing, took, you know, a million plus dollar loss, pretty wild. On this type of volatility, so you got, you got, you gotta respect your rules and uh, you know just trade these with uh, you know with with good risk levels and respect those risk levels. Uh, I know Kyle, I, I think he ended up shorting here when like in the first down haul, he ended up covering partial here at 302, and I think he held the rest of his shares all the way through here and then ended up recovering back down here, which is, you know, I, I think he's going to do a recap on that at some point. But th there's like a lot of traders who did not expect this type of move. And typically, you know, you, you short on the first down haul and you're set, but you think from 160 up to 360 is enough of an exponential move for it to you know, come all the way back down to like 220s or something. No, man, this thing is insane. So after it did that, uh, the real best play here would be, you know, shorting on this first downhaul here. And, uh, you know, I would say that that's pretty much it. This thing really didn't bounce much of it at all. I mean, I guess uh, it got pretty tight right in this range. So I do want to just draw that so you guys can see uh, what I see here. You know, that got a very, very tight range. Um, I would say, you know, it, it even kind of came down like this, very tight wedge there, broke out, you know, from 330s, went to 375. Uh, so that's probably the best play, if I had to say, you know, in terms of uh, what I see on this chart, but I didn't take this at all. But what's crazy is it, it made a bunch of other stocks run, like auto, this one ran pretty wild. Uh, we had, I know there's more guys, I know there's more. We had LOTZ, car lots, this one ran, just because it's related to cars. And uh, the craziest one that I am most upset about is HTZZ. And this is Hertz, if you guys aren't aware. Uh, you know, this company, if I go back, oh, was it? All right, well, that's dumb. Stocks to trade, when there's a ticker change, it doesn't show the previous chart. That's really dumb. Uh, this stock was HTZ GQ, and uh, it was in bankruptcy, but they came out of bankruptcy, and I thought they went on the NASDAQ when they did that. Apparently, they're still OTC. So I missed this entire run-up. This is so typical of an OTC run-up. You don't really see this in NASDAQs because it would halt. And uh, when it happens and it turns, man, oh my gosh, would have been an epic short. I just didn't have shares to short. Uh, I really should get a Cobra because I would have made probably at least $5,000 even with small size in these you know, three minutes right here. So epic trade there. Uh, I mean, obviously the long would have been even more epic if I caught that. But unfortunately, what I ended up doing was going for the dip buy and uh, the dip buy just did not pan out like I was hoping. So I, uh, I actually have some footage here. I bought right here, ended up cutting. I bought right here, sold half, and then ended up cutting into the washout. And I didn't attempt the ba bounce a third time because uh, it was an OTC pink and I didn't want to use up all my buying power. And then from there, you know, it went on to bounce above here and above here. And uh, I would have made 
oof, uh, probably like three thousand dollars on that dip buy. So I ended up, I think I was like net negative, like maybe a hundred or two hundred on this trade, unfortunately. Uh, but just kind of frustrating uh, that it, you know it ends up bouncing really nicely. And then I would have reshorted this bounce, obviously. You know that's that's the secondary play on these, but. Uh, there were still no shares to short, otherwise I would have shorted up here. So that was one that I missed, but I do have some some footage of me, you know, trying to dip by this, and uh, you know that should be pretty fun. So that was, you know, just these plays, guys. Just insane to see runs like this. Cars, I mean, that's oh, I guess I guess cars ran too. Uh, but car, that was that was the big one. Avis, that's where I typically rent cars from. And I mean, this thing just went crazy. It's weird to see stuff go this insane. You know, it was like GME all over again. I mean, wow. I guess it's fairly low float. I think someone said it was like 60, 60 million float, but uh, still, like, wow. For a stock this expensive, that is an explosive move, guys. Explosive. Uh, so, yeah, I mean, just crazy. Now, the stock that I want to talk about is AABB because this did pretty much exactly what I had, you know, kind of my number one guess at. So, it, it had a gap up, it had a blow off top, and then it went into a choppy panic that lasted longer than even I expected and uh, you know had a crazy candle if you look at that like just wild so that, that was kind of my, my number one guess you know it could have done anything but it, it had a big gap up blow off top and then a choppy panic so hopefully my uh, my analysis on that yesterday was helpful for you guys being prepared for this panic not dip buying and averaging down because this thing literally put in like 16 different fake bottoms like that's not even an exaggeration man so like where you know fakes out starts bouncing and then makes a lower uh, a lower low. I mean, the amount of times that it did that is just insane. Insane, 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 ins like it's just wild. Absolutely wild. So, uh, I ended up, my biggest mistake on this one was, uh, was switching my bias too early. So, I was very, very short biased on this thing in the morning. Uh, you know, looking at this chart, it's easy to see why it ran straight from eight cents and was at, you know, 28 cents. So pretty easy to be short biased on this thing. Uh, there was a time here where it, it looked a little bit strong and it literally, it could have gone either way out of this wedge. So if I zoom in here, uh, so you guys can see just a little bit better, let me draw, draw this line. You know, it literally out of this wedge could have gone either way. It, it literally could have gone either way. You know, beautiful, uh, you know, volume decline. I mean, this is just a, a, just a textbook setup, man textbook setup and uh, this end up I ended up shorting you know out of this because I knew that it was it was very likely to uh, end up going into panic just based on the overall daily chart um, but you know this thing it could have it could have kept running but it did it ended up doing exactly what I thought now again my issue was I flipped biases too soon so I made about I think uh, I think I made like 6500 shorting this thing and uh, at that point I uh, I kind of switched I think, yeah, so I think right here I covered, uh, you know, the rest of my shares. I was short for this washout here. I covered the rest here. I do have some footage of that that I'll show you guys in a second. Um, but then, you know, I ended up bouncing. This bounce failed. I should have reshorted here. I didn't. Instead, I started trying to dip by this thing. So, you know, I dip bought here, stopped paying attention, ended up cutting into this washout. Uh, you know, same thing here, tried to dip by, washed out. Same thing here, tried to dip by, washed out. And then I gave up on it. And I was saying in the Discord, by the way, if you're in the Discord, uh, you know, you probably heard all this live commentary and hopefully it was helpful. I said, you know, this, this is the type of stock where it has a really choppy panic and it puts in so many fake bottoms that eventually you just, you, you physically are incapable of attempting the dip buy and that is when it actually bounces and you miss the actual bounce. And I'm like, I don't want to do that again. And I literally did that again today. Like not, you know, not 20 minutes after I said that, I just gave up trying to dip buy this thing and it actually put in the bottom. Now, it did have a nice wedge at the bottom, but I didn't even trust the wedge just because it had made so many fake bottoms. But, you know, it got pretty tight right there. And, uh, you know, that's, that's a pretty good entry. Um, but, you know, it easily could have washed out and made another lower low. So that's, you know, part of why I was skeptical. But at that point, it was already down, what, you know, over 10 cents from those highs. So uh, I just, I want to be better about this in the future. I know Sal ended up nailing this with 50,000 shares to make back some of his uh, his losses that he had made, um, you know, trying to trying to dip by some of these, because it's crazy, man. So if I had just stayed short biased, uh, you know, I could have reshorted into every single bounce and, uh, you know, probably ended up at like 2,900, not 29, um, like 9,000 or 10,000. And then I would have been fresh to dip by it with size. And, uh, you know, I could have ended up, you know, 12 or 13,000 on this stock instead of like, you know, 7,000 on this stock. So because of that, I'm a little disappointed in how I played this, but, I'm really not sure how to do it, man. I guess I guess the best way is uh, to 
day being short biased on these choppy stocks, until we start getting cleaner panics and cleaner bounces, like if they're these choppy sell-offs, I gotta be short biased and short into the bounces until it makes a higher high. I just have to. And uh, you know, that's, that's as, as simple as it is. Show me one time on this chart where it made a higher high and it wasn't the bottom. Made the high, nope, lower, lower, fade off, lower, 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 lower. I mean, I guess this was higher than there, but still not higher than here, you know, it failed. Bounced, could not make a higher high than there. That's a lower, 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 lower. Once it gets higher, breaks this, you know, that's the bottom, man. That's the bottom. So I should have covered there and, uh, and probably, you know, at least attempted a small long, risking, I guess, the breakdown here. I guess the one issue is the fact that it, you know, that is kind of a lot of risk if it ends up breaking a new low day. And I have seen stocks where they put in a higher high and then they'll still dump to a new lower low. So that's why I was a little bit hesitant on this one. Um, but you know, I, I, I guess I should have just stayed short bias longer, knowing how overextended the chart was. So I shouldn't have started trying to dip by this thing at, uh, at 19 when it was still up from eight in a couple of days. You know, I started trying to dip by it, uh, you know, kind of right there on the chart. And it had more room to go down, it really did. And I guess it ended up bouncing pretty much right at the lows from that previous day. So that was, you know, another good support level. So. Uh, that's kind of my lesson from that. Uh, I just need to be more patient, especially when uh, when the chart is super overextended. Consider the big picture and don't flip biases too soon because I gave back a lot of profits, like at least a thousand dollars I gave back trying to dip by it. Uh, in instead, I could have you know made a couple thousand more if I just shorted and then I wouldn't have missed the actual bounce. So I'm frustrated at myself for that, but it is what it is. And uh, yeah, that is pretty much it. Now that I've talked about that, let's, uh, let's go into my recording of the live trading footage so you can see here um i'm short a little bit because i'm kind of expecting this thing to break down uh and just go into a big panic but abb is never that easy so i pretty much take a bunch of paper cuts so you can see right now i am up uh i am up 1000 you know almost 200 bucks and i end up taking so many paper cuts that i get down to about like plus 200 bucks on this thing so i get back like a thousand dollars and, uh, you know, I don't want to get into all, I don't want to make you watch the whole thing, but you can see, you know, I'm, I'm short because I'm expecting it to break down. I'm very short biased given the overall chart. Uh, but, you know, I still have to manage my risk there. I still have to manage my risk. Yeah. So again, I don't want to, I don't want to, you know, make you guys watch this whole thing, but all I can say is it was being really annoying. Uh, you know, kept bouncing when it shouldn't have been bouncing. Uh, well, I guess, you know, there's no should have, would have, could have, you know, whatever, but, uh, it felt like it shouldn't have been bouncing based on how overextended it was, yet it was still bouncing. So I was just trying to manage risk, uh, and not be short a ton of shares if this thing's going to rip through high day and go over 30. But at the same time, you know, I'm still very short biased. So I'm trying to short into these pops, uh, but manage my risk at the same time. So you see, I'm like buying and I'm reshorting as it goes high. It's just, it's just like very choppy, a big mess out there. So you can see I gave back most of those profits already. Uh, pretty annoying. If I zoom forward, you know, I actually go long because it looks like it's breaking out. And you know, if this thing goes, if this thing breaks out as mini wedge, yeah, I want to be long because it probably rips past high day. So I actually go long, uh, and then I have to flip back short. It ends up dumping. You know, annoying bounces. I cover. You can see I just I get back a lot of my profits in this choppiness. Just very annoying, very annoying trade. Um, until eventually, you know, this thing ends up dumping. That's the chart for HTZZ guys. That's like literally right before it dumped. That's when I saw it. If I had shares, man, I would have shorted the hell out of this thing. Bro, I would have I would have shorted that. This, especially on an OTC stock, oh my gosh. I just love this, man. You just know a massive panic is coming. And uh, you know, just crazy, crazy, man. Yeah, so you can see uh, here's my my first dip buy on HTZZ. For whatever reason, they fill me above the ask. Very weird. So I buy 500 shares. You can see I'm already down hundred bucks before anything even happens. They fill me at, you know, 39.70 when the ask was at 39.50, um, but it ends up failing here and going lower. So I end up cutting for like, you know, a hundred something dollar loss right before it dumps. Yeah, so you can see I cut just in time. Would have lost, you know, probably 700 bucks there or something like that, 800 bucks. So I got lucky on that one. Well, I guess it wasn't really luck. You know, I, I was smart enough to cut it when I did, but you know, I did get a nice fill there. So that was nice. I'm ready, ready, ready for the next dip buy, seeing if it can make it down to VWAP or not. Looks like it's bouncing again. So I long some, you know, I'm long 500 there. It starts bouncing a little bit. I'm up a little bit. Uh, so I sell half, 
you know, I'm up 400 bucks on this. It looks like it could be nice, but it's failing a little bit. Uh, so I wait to see. I take off half. Um, and I like to do that just because, especially when you get bad fills, it's just the smart thing to do because if it ends up failing and washing out, like you have half the size that you're getting washed out with and you already locked in some profits. So that's why I like to do that. And, uh, you know, you can see this thing is, is pretty lame, just ends up failing again. And then the third time, I don't even try to dip by it, which is dumb, because, like, this was the nice bounce right here. And uh, I just, I messed that one up, man. I messed that one up. I felt like I missed it. You know, I probably could have done it there. It ends up bouncing nicely. Um, and from there, you know, goes up to, what, 41 or 42? Crazy bounce. I just... I just didn't take it, guys. I didn't take it. Uh, in the future, you know, I guess you just got to not let yourself get scared out by these. And, you know, just keep taking, keep, keep taking stabs at it, you know, especially if it's a nice little panic. You know, sometimes it's worth it. As long as you cut your losses and get back in, you don't average down. Um, so at this point, ABB is wedged out really nicely. You know, beautiful wedge entry setting up. I know it's going to pick a direction soon. It just keeps getting tighter and tighter and tighter. At some point, it's going to pick a direction and, and, you know, have pretty nice continuation out of that. So that's what I'm looking for here. But again, I'm very short biased overall. Like, it, it looks strong, so I, like, kind of think that it's going to break out. But overall, in my head, I know I should be short biased just because it's so overextended. You know, it's straight up from $0.08 cents and now it's at, you know, $0.26.7. Cents. So it's very overextended. So because of that... You know, I, I take my short position again. You can see my profits get get down. I'm, I'm at like 300 bucks, bro. Pretty wild. Uh, but finally, it cracks this wedge, and uh, yeah, I actually throw up the E trade level two, so you can see it here, just on some of these panics, just to see what it looks like. Um, unfortunately, anytime I place an order, uh, I have to click on the the Schwab screen, which puts E trade in the background. For whatever reason, I can't pin this E trade to the front, which is annoying. Uh, if I could do that, I would have just left it up the whole time, but I can't. And obviously Schwab has no level two for OTCs, so it's a little bit annoying. Um, but, you know, every time I place an order, I have to click and then you can't see the level two anymore. But you can still see the level one and the uh, time and sales on Schwab. But you can see, you know, all those paper cuts are kind of worth it now. I mean, I'm already up 1500 bucks uh, just on this little mini dump here. I'm short 120,000 shares of ABB. And, uh, you know, it just, I try to be patient with this one. It tries to bounce off of uh, the opening price at first, so you know I uh, I think I may cover some there. Um, but in general, I'm, I'm still just very short biased. Now, if I had had if, if at some point, if I have you know 10 million dollars in my account and I can short this and just sit on it, I'm gonna be more patient on these because I know it's very likely to keep going down. Uh, but the way that I trade, you know, I need that money uh, for trading other stuff. So if I'm fully short, it won't let me short anything else in my account. Uh, even though that's only a $30,000 position, you need to have $300,000 in your account to be able to short 120,000 shares, if that makes sense. Uh, because, you know, it's the, it's the 250 rule. So for every share that you short, you need to have a $2.50 worth in your account, if that makes sense. So you can see I just made even more on that little dump there. I think I started locking some in here, uh, maybe a little bit. At some point, I think, maybe. Yeah, I'm down to 101,000, You know, I gave back some profits there, unfortunately, because it's just like choppy. The level two is very tough to read. Uh, you know, it's, it's just a very annoying stock overall. I feel like a lot of these old runners, OTCs, are very crowded. Like the, the market makers are just really good at, at just making them do whatever the heck they want. It can be very tough to read. Fills can be very bad. So uh, that's just something you gotta keep in mind. But yeah, again, and the 250 rule again. So like, if you want to short 100,000 shares of a penny stock, it doesn't matter if it's only a, you know, a 20 cent stock. You need to have $250,000 in your account to short 100,000 shares. So I have 330,000, so I could theoretically short, you know, 130, what, 135,000 shares or something like that. Uh, so pretty much, if I'm short 120,000, I can't really trade anything else, which is dumb because you know, yes. I'm short biased on this all day long, but I'm also going to make a lot of money trading other stocks. So there's an opportunity cost that I have to weigh. You know, do I want to stay short my entire account and not trade anything else? Or do I want to, you know, try to cover into these dips and then, you know, trade other stuff. And then when it has a nice bounce, maybe I try to short again. So that's kind of what I do. And I also like to do that to, to minimize risk of, you know, a huge bounce taking away a large portion of profits. But it can be kind of annoying sometimes because I, I get a lot of slippage, you know, if I, uh, if I don't cover perfectly in these bounces, or I guess into these dumps, 
I'm covering into the highest part of the bounce and then I have to reshorten the weakness if there's a fake out, you know, that I'm short from here and then I have to cover into the bounce again. I can get, I can get chopped up a lot, guys. And I, I did get chopped up a lot on this stock today. Luckily, you know, I, I've been doing this long enough to know that I should have been short bias today, uh, which is why I, was, I still was able to make, you know, some money shorting this thing, even though it was very tricky to read a lot of the times. But it was just, a, you know, a great short setup, I guess. That's, that's the main takeaway. And, uh, you know, I don't want to make you guys watch another hour of this footage, but you can basically see here, you know, it does end up dumping lower. Uh, I, I'm able to get short some more. Has an annoying bounce again. Uh, comes back and, you know, Look at that. I mean, I was up, I was up 4,700 and then it bounces and I'm up 3,700, you know, just like that. And the, the fills, it's just really tough to fill. So it's just really annoying. Um, I end up reshorting there though. Yeah, I got some more. I end up covering, yeah, I end up covering pretty much all of them at, at like 23. You can see I'm only short 20,000 now. Cause you know, I didn't know if that was, if it was going to bounce, if it was going to hold that green area. Ends up failing, you know, I, I end up reshorting. Uh, probably should have reshorted more. End up reshorting more, you know, as it gets weaker, I reshort more, cover some, yada, yada, yada. Ends up breaking the new lows, you know, struggles a little bit, but ends up dumping some more. And, uh, you know, now I'm up 5,200 on the day. I think I cut the recording for a little bit and then I come back in, yeah, right as it's breaking down under 22, I'm short 100,000 shares, you know, up 5,700 now. Dumps a little more, dumps nice, and I mean, literally just like that, in the blink of an eye. In the blink of an eye, this thing dumps. It's on 4x speed, I think, by the way. Uh, in the blink of an eye, this thing dumps, and I go from being up, you know, 5,800, breaks under 21, now I'm up 6,400, and I'm able to cover pretty much all of it uh, down here. I covered a lot, yeah, I got 20,000 shares left. You know, up 6,500 there. Um, and uh, that's pretty much it for this recording. Um, it gets a little choppy after that and I end up, you know, giving back some, but it is what it is. And, uh, yeah, that's all I have for the recording guys. You know, I end up finishing up. $8,450, in my Schwab. And then I made another like 400 something in my TD Ameritrade. So that's how I got to 8,900 on the day. Uh, but you know, pretty nice day overall and just, you know, wanted to show you guys this, uh, this footage just so you could, you know, I guess get a little taste of, uh, of what it's like to, to trade these with size and, you know, try to deal with the choppy, annoying BS on this. Now, again, I do end up giving back some of these profits, uh, you know, trying to, well, I make a little more, get up to 7,500 and then get back down to 6,500 trying to dip by this thing. Uh, but you know, it is what it is. I learned my lessons from that. I'm going to, I'm going to try to be more patient, especially if it's, uh, you know, an old runner that is that is gone way farther than it should. There's not really any real catalysts on this thing. So, uh, yeah, that's uh, that's kind of my takeaway, guys. So, hopefully you found it helpful. If you made it to the end, it's a pretty long video. I know most people won't. Uh, got my receipt from all these. Let me know what your favorite supermarket is. Comment down below your favorite supermarket if you made it to the end. That's how I'll know. You're a true, uh, a true legend. I'll see you in the next one. Until then, you know the drill. Let's go better together. Preguntar, bebé, dime por qué te mientes. No puedes esconder todo lo que tú por mí sientes.